Hello, this is Serb Atheist. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the main reason that most top scientists are atheist. Let's take a look at America. 90% of general population is religious, 40% of scientists, 7% in the National Academy of Science, that meaning the top level of scientists, the most elite scientists. And not only that, but Neil deGrasse Tyson can actually go up on the podium and say that that is a sign that 93% of the top scientists are not doing their job. In other words, for him, 7% of religious people in the top levels of science is not unusually low, it's unusually high. So, why is it that top scientists are overwhelmingly atheists and scientists are, in general, much more atheistic than the general population? Um, is it because uh, is it because they are more intelligent and uh, and uh, intelligence implies atheism in some way? I don't think so. I think that if you took the top IQ, you know, truck drivers with IQs of 200, and you know, the folks with high IQ that never really uh, went into a a career of this nature, uh, if you took um, them and compared how religious they are, I'm sure you would get very similar results to those of the general population. In other words, it's not intelligence. In my opinion, it's erudition. It's how much a person is acquainted with what the best science we have today tells us about our universe. So the question is, what does science say about the nature of our universe? What, what, what have we learned about the universe up to this point? Well, the main conclusion we can draw from what we've learned is that the universe is simple. It's not only simple. It's a simple mathematical system governed by simple mathematical laws. In other words, with a few slight modifications, no different really from, you know, let's say, the set of natural numbers. Now, this is a statement that would probably surprise even some atheists. Um, and two questions crop up. The first question is, well, if the universe is so damn simple, uh, why do physicists have jobs? Really. If we're so damn clever saying the universe is simple, why does it take years to become a physicist? Well, two main reasons. The first reason is that the goal of a physicist is very similar to that of a detective. You have many clues, hints, and you need to piece together a picture of what is really happening. In other words, for all of these puzzling, seemingly contradictory facts, you need to find a simple explanation. And getting to a simple explanation is an extremely difficult feet. Um, to, to produce a complicated explanation is easy. Just add ad hoc any modification whenever something happens which contradicts your previous uh, predictions. But that's not the way of physics. That's the easy road. It is very, very difficult to come up with a new physics theory that takes several distinct and seemingly mutually contradictory areas 
and put them in a coherent whole and show how these contradictory aspects are just special cases of the more general theory. In fact, if you do that, for example, if you do that with general relativity and quantum mechanics, you will get a Nobel Prize. You'll get several. <laughs> Only a handful of people can ever boast um, making new theories that have actually stood the test of time. For example, Newton with classical mechanics and universal gravitation. Einstein, of course, with special and general relativity. Then we've got Schrodinger who, uh, and Heisenberg who developed quantum mechanics. Maxwell, Hertz, Faraday, Ampere, all their combined effort gave us uh, the theory of electromagnetism uniting electricity, magnetism, and light, which, which until then were considered three completely separate things that had nothing to do with each other. The more modern day, you've got Feynman and a few others that created quantum electrodynamics, one of the most successful theories in the history of mankind. So, in essence, to actually find new and even simpler theories that, that cover essentially everything is, is very difficult. And we're getting to that point where the pieces of the puzzle have more or less come together. We only have a few few giant pieces that we now need to somehow fit into a hole and I'm sure that will happen. But by now it's obvious that the final solution will be a relatively simple set of mathematical equations completely describing our universe. Now the second part, why physicists have jobs is that the goal is not only to found new theories. If that was the only thing physicists did, then 99.9% .9 of physicists would not have a job. But it's also to expand, elucidate, um, work out the consequences of these theories, which is in essence uh, something that will take an infinitely long time. Um, and even uh, even if we, when we find a theory of everything, uh, there will still be more than enough work for physicists. So, uh, the second question is, can, can life really exist in a simple universe? Can a simple universe with simple laws actually produce complicated consequences? And the answer is, yes! Yes! We study these all the time. For a physicist, this would be the most natural thing, like 2 plus 2 equals 4. Take any simple set of equations, all you have to do is make it nonlinear, and all hell breaks loose. That is what chaos theory is about, studying these nonlinear equations which yield outrageously complicated consequences. So to say that all of this, including uh, you, me, this computer, uh, could not be a consequence of simple laws is completely wrong. And I'll talk about this more in my ne next videos. So to sum up, God, if he exists and is controlling this universe, has pro even if he did exist, has probably killed himself of boredom by now. Because you know, when people say, oh, God moves the wind, controls the oceans, creates life, and so on, he doesn't actually blow and the wind goes. That's not how it works. His control would have to f come at a much smaller scale. By mindless, repetitious application of simple laws. So, that is how our universe works. All that we see that is seemingly complicated is actually mindlessly simple. So, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.